In my previous videos, we went through a few different editing styles that you can use to edit your photos in Lightroom Classic. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below for anyone willing to watch those videos. Today, however, I would like to go through a few different practical tips that you can use to enhance your workflow when editing photos in Lightroom Classic. So whether you're a seasoned user or a complete beginner, make sure to stay tuned to see my top tips for Lightroom Classic. Let's get right into it. As always, I've gone ahead and imported a few photos to showcase these tips, and I'm going to start with the first tip, which is to use the shift and double click method. So the shift double click method does a very simple thing. What it does is it adjusts the parameter that you double click on while pressing shift to an automatic setting. Basically Lightroom decides what would work best with your image. And to showcase this, I'm going to use this image and I'm going to press shift on my keyboard and double click on exposure. Double click on contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks all the while pressing the shift key on my keyboard. And as you can see, the image has immediately gone from an overexposed and underexposed, very high contrast image to a, a sort of properly exposed image with obviously a bit of a blown out sky, but it still looks much, much better than what we started with. Tip number two would be understanding the histogram and using the clipping indicators within the histogram panel in Lightroom Classic. So, if we take a look at the top right corner, there is the histogram, which is basically a graphical um, interpretation of our photo. The histogram tells us whether your photo is overexposed, underexposed, whether your whites are clipping, whether your blacks are clipping, and understanding this is a very important tool for any photographer. So, if your photo is overexposed, the graph in the right hand corner is practically reaching the top and is clipping. We can see clipping in our histogram by clicking on these two indicator arrows right here and making sure they are enabled and if we move exposure one way or the other, we can see blacks clipping and whites clipping if we move to the other side. If you're shooting a photo in very bright sunlight, for example, the histogram is a very, very important tool because you can view your histogram on your, on your camera and it will be a very clear indicator whether your photo is overexposed, underexposed, or whether your exposure is properly set. Now, if you shoot a, an overexposed image or an underexposed image in camera, those details, the blacks and the whites, are practically lost. You cannot recover them in post-editing, basically. So there is no perfect histogram, but the most important tip I can give you is to never clip your blacks or your whites in camera. So my third tip is to use local adjustments. Local adjustments can make all the difference in your photos, especially when you're dealing with um, foregrounds that need specific adjustments compared to the background. So if, for example, I decide to use this photo and, for example, um, increase clarity and the haze, you can see that my tree and my background has become very dark, too saturated and uh, too sharp. Now, if we use a local adjustment in the form of a linear gradient, for example, and make sure we don't touch the subject and the background, we can see that we can do the same adjustments, some positive dehaze, some added clarity and texture. We can also touch up on the temperature and tint, and maybe play around with the blacks and whites. And as you can see, with this basic adjustment, just a local adjustment on the foreground, we've gone from a hazy foreground to a very detailed foreground that practically leads your eyes towards the subject, which is the tree in this case. Tip number four is related to the healing tool. So, when using the healing tool, for example, on this picture, which has a few dust spots here, or, or rain spots, I'm not sure what they were, um, 
and you want to get rid of them, you can certainly use the healing tool, but there's a trick that you can uh, enable this option right here, visualize spots, which basically gives you a view which makes the dust spots, the rain spots more prominent in your view. So if we increase this, this visualizer right here, we can go ahead and remove these quickly with a few simple clicks. This small spot right here doesn't really show in my view when I'm, I'm in the fit sort of window. If you zoom in, you can see it. However, using the visualize spots, you can see it quite clearly and you can remove it quite easily. Tip number five is all about clarity and haze. Now, many people like to use clarity and haze to sort of sharpen their image, to make, make their details more prominent. However, when we're dealing with a shot that has a lot of, a lot of textures, a lot of uh, different things uh, close to each other, clarity and the haze can be reduced in order to create a smoother looking shot and a more dreamy looking shot. So let me show you what I mean by this. So if I reduce my clarity and the haze right here, you can see that, that my shot has become a bit more dreamy, has become smoother, I would say. But then if we do a few small adjustments to our photo, for example, let's say we set the temperature and tint of the photo to create the proper white balance and, for example, use a radial gradient to mimic a more natural sunlight, um, we can see that our, our photo takes a completely different look. Uh, let's create just another simple linear gradient. I'm going to increase exposure. And play around with the contrast. And if we take a look at the before and after of this shot, we can see that there's, there's this uh, sort of haze coming in from the left side, there's this sort of haze coming in from the bottom right corner, and it all merges together to um, sort of pull your eyes towards our subject. And with the added warmth to, to the photo, it creates that, that, extra, that extra dreamy look. My sixth and final tip is just a suggestion. If you've been editing your photo for a couple of minutes, let's say five to 10 minutes, and you're not seeing results, you should stop editing that photo. Maybe discard that photo, come back to it later, or come back to it on another day. When you have a fresh mind, then you can edit it in a different way. That's my personal opinion and that's what I do whenever I don't see results on my photos. I would be wasting time if I keep on editing the same photo over and over again without any results. So I hope you like my tips and tricks and I hope you can utilize them in your editing workflow. And please make sure to like and subscribe for more similar tutorials. Thank you for watching as always.